Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bob Carter, and I'm joined today by Doug Weaver from Aptio. And this is a special topic that's been popping up more and more in our discussions with prospects, customers, and a lot through the TBM working groups that have come through over the last several months around the healthcare side of the equation and the value people are trying to derive um, through IT financial management. So the purpose of today's call is to actually take you through some um, converging themes that we're finding across the industry itself, um, including the academic medical centers and what they're looking to achieve. We'll talk through uh, some of the use cases and people are getting value with the solution set. And uh, we'll get into some uh, demonstration capability that allows people to see sort of takeout costs and where they might be having costs that, um, that can be taken out of the equation to help them free up those monies for proper investments to serve uh, their customers and clearly the hospital needs. So why don't I get started and um, we'll take you through some content. I'll turn it over to Doug Weaver for a live demonstration and then we'll bring it back at the end to put a bow on sort of the high points. So central to what we're seeing across the academic medical centers and again, the healthcare industry when it comes to IT financial management, um, the key thing is they're just trying to drive decision making. And we heard it time and time again, is that a lot of folks are trying to take out costs through anecdotal measures, through sort of not fact-based decision. So the very bottom there is that how do you derive insights to make those decisions is really what it was coming down to, to a lot of the conversations and focus groups that we pull this information from. And they're really trying to understand in order to make those decisions, they really need to understand how they budget and plan, how they spend, how they look at application rationalization as they migrate to the cloud. That was probably the biggest one, frankly, that came out of the, the content that derived from these focus groups. And then lastly, an eye on agile as well. So how do you plan for agile development if you're developing certain applications and systems uh, as part of that process? So those are the key areas that a lot of folks were looking at. Um, but part of the problem in part of this is there's a lot of data that people are up against is probably the best way to put it. And some of the um, factoids, as I like to call them, come out of Gartner and Forrester and others. But I think some of this is common sense, but it really comes down to how do you handle sort of demand or growth or, you know, if you want to modernize your facility or your medical center, how do you do that, still provide the right services, but address new initiatives that are coming along? So demand planning was a big factor for a lot of folks. How do they do better demand planning to the point that only 29% of organizations are actually satisfied on how they're doing their demand planning today. And some other factoids I'd like to bring up at the beginning here is that by 2022, just next year, organizations are expected to be running up to 75% of their workloads in the cloud. And that varies based upon the industries, but on average, Forrester is pointing out that more and more workloads are moving to the cloud. And we're finding in academic medical centers, it's a little less than that, um, but the benefits of the cloud is starting to become more part of the conversation as folks migrate to the cloud. Another one is that organizations without a formal cost optimization process in place may be overspending by 40% or more. And we'll dig into that as one of the top topics today as we pulled in the information from these different groups of where that overspending is taking place. And this one is coming from one of the clear leaders in Gartner. And one more here is that through 2022, in any given month, over 30% of the growing expenditure on software and cloud services will be unused. So this is a big one that we're gonna actually drill down and demonstrate today is that how do you, how do you get your arms around your SaaS and cloud spend specific to a lot of the software that's now running in the cloud? And clearly, a lot of this is a function of COVID. Uh, a lot of folks folk shifted to remote work, remote support, remote teleworkers, uh, a bit redundant, but remote te teleworkers. And that required a whole new licensing model of how people worked 
and then you add the security layer on top of it, things such as VPN, securing those software and data assets. How do you manage that and how do you track it from an expenditure standpoint? So in some cases, people are still not truly aware of what their downstream cost is going to be as they enter into a lot of these licensing agreements and they haven't been hit yet of the true costs. So we'll bring that to bear over the next uh, until uh, 145 East Coast time. So here are the themes that came out of the focus groups around academic medical centers. And some people use the term cost cutting. Uh, others use this term that we really in were introduced to is called cost realignment, meaning I have X amount of money and how do I properly align it to the goals of the academic medical center? And application rationalization was one of the top and it tied into cloud and SaaS as well. In application rationalization, one of the, the biggest anecdotes came out of University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. We're able, they were able to shake out $7 million in costs by eliminating 70 different applications within their portfolio. So they actually dug in and did the analysis of the total cost of the applications, uh, the usage of the applications, what could run elsewhere, what could be retired. Basically, where, did they, where should they be making the bets going forward with, within their application portfolio. But the most striking thing that was interesting to them, now they have a $500 million operational budget within the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And you might say, you know, seven million, not a lot of money. But the biggest thing that they told us was that with a 1% operating margin, they would have to actually increase their bev, uh, revenue stream by $700 million to actually achieve that $7 million worth of application rationalization, migration or shakeout as part of their cost cutting or cost realignment, uh, which is the term we heard as well. Huge return on investment for an organization to go through that process and get that $7 million so they could use it elsewhere. Another one that came up was the cloud, moving to the cloud. Uh, what does that mean? Once I'm running into the cloud, a lot of folks are very fearful that they don't have a good pulse on their cloud spend and they move to the cloud as part of their strategy, but they don't really have good insight on how to optimize and take advantage of the cloud correctly. Uh, SaaS was another one um, that came up quite a bit. I talked about it at the beginning, getting a pulse on those SaaS licenses, uh, move, moving workloads to the cloud. What does that entail? What is the cost of on-prem? What is the cost of running the different service providers? What is the downstream cost of running in the cloud? So that moving, just moving the workloads is not enough. Is not enough. You need to have full visibility into that cloud, cloud world. Variance analysis was a big one as well in the sense of I budgeted for X, I spent for Y, were they aligned? And in most cases, what we're finding is that there's a minimum of 6% variance between budget to spend. It's not a bad thing as people had to pivot, call an audible in a lot of cases and spend differently, but better spend and, and, and better budgeting together really allows you to shake out quite a bit of waste as well. And then lastly, getting away from the anecdotal decision-making, fact-based decisions. So these were sort of the core six areas that popped up in our conversations with the healthcare industry uh, and academic medical centers. But the business problem that we're finding or the challenges are how do I get there or how do I leverage the information and assets and systems that they have? And the problem that repeatedly came up for those that ultimately got to automation was that most of these systems are not designed for IT, meaning that how things are coded within these systems is rather cryptic Never mind having a conversation on how to make better decision making on where the money should go. It's very labor intensive. A lot of these organizations are, you know, heads down in spreadsheets, very siloed and trying to understand their de decision making, very error prone uh, because it's not an automated prospect, uh, process. And again, it's not automated. So the notion of running what if analysis and budget scenarios and planning scenarios is really foreign to them. So on top of that, this is where most of them were before they automated, what they have and where they wanted to go. So a lot of folks was taking a long time to answer questions, 
Um, they had increasing run costs. They had cloud spend overrun. They had a lot in their portfolio. Like I mentioned, the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center went through that application rationalization analysis to move to a lean portfolio. I mentioned uh, the 15, this has 15% variance in, in higher cases, but you know, even smaller numbers going with a hundred million dollar budget where you could tighten the screws on 4%, uh, that's worth a lot of money, clearly $4 million. And then going through this cost cutting exercises, how do you do it in an automated way? So these are the hurdles to get to automation. So as I take you through some of the folks that own the Aptio solution set, this isn't meant to be promotion of Aptio, but talk about a lot of the business problems that others are facing, much like yourself in, in the academic medical center community, is that what they really wanted to do at Marshfield Clinic is drive a culture of transformation. And they really went through the process of understanding all their costs, and they kept using the terminology running IT like a business to the point where they were able to achieve $17 million in cost savings over two years. So call it cost cutting, call it cost transformation, uh, call it cost alignment, $17 million over two years. So now they have a repeatable process, an automated process to understand the full TCO of their organization. Another Northwell Health, Northwell Health um, these folks really wanted to understand the capture of not only their IT, but they were spending 90% of their time aggregating data and 10% of the time analyzing it. Totally upside down. So they really wanted to increase the credibility of their IT finance team. So when they actually sat down with the senior leaders within their healthcare organization, they could have that conversation and talk within the same terms. So when they did their budgeting processes and they actually went into the spend mode, they were all aligned with one another. As we go on through this, Christus Health um, really wanted to reduce their IT planning cycles. So as you may know, if you've ever been through a planning and budgeting cycle, it can take four or five months because it's a very iterative process. You're trying to collect a lot of data, get a lot of feedback, understand the actuals, and they really wanted to reduce that cycle because they wanted to be more nimble. And they wanted to move from a quarterly forecasting to a monthly forecasting. And they wanted to reduce that annual budget variance by 50%. And in doing so, they were able to save a lot of money, but also align it correctly and have the right relationships with the budget owners. So actually have a true conversation and say, this is the cost of IT to support your cost center was foreign to them until they invested in an automated solution. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of uh, California, uh, again, within the healthcare arena, really wanted to eliminate a lot of the manual processes uh, as part of their uh, environment that they are dealing with. But more importantly, they wanted to really get a maturing process of tying business to planning and doing the proper forecasting instead of estimating. A lot of folks do budget estimations and you know the key thing is to have that fact-based decision making so they, they're able to create their first budget in 60 days and provide the cio not only with a yearly plan but a three-year forecast spend because they had that level of granularity within their processes this one here is actually baylor health which i'm excited about and we talk about university of pittsburgh medical center and um, they actually did a little bit better, to, twice as better actually as, as Pittsburgh, where they were able to identify $14 million to fund innovation. So, so what does something like that mean? We find a lot of organizations that are really trapped within their O&M spend, their legacy IT, and they're really trying to do three things at once. They want to modernize. They want to do application rationalization. They want to understand their SaaS costs. They want to migrate to the cloud, yet they're hobbled by the ball and chain of their legacy IT. So Baylor, University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, uh, quite a few others uh, have invested in the platform, really want to go through the process, identifying their costs, understand their vendor spend too. Vendor is another big part of the equation. We're not gonna show you a demonstration of that today. We're gonna focus on two areas that we think that will find the, most, the highest return on investment in the shortest time frame. But the big thing is getting that visibility and understanding the business itself. 
So everyone went down this path to get there. And why do they do that? At the end of the day, they get insights for every role within IT, whether it's the finance folks, the portfolio managers, the business resource managers, the application owners, and the cloud leaders. This gives them a way to collaborate, communicate, and advance the portfolio, talking from the same um, page of music, uh, whatever term you want to use. A lot of people are not, most organizations are very siloed. And that's what we want to bring to bear today is helping you address these hurdles that are in front of you, but get into this automation mode of running IT as a business. So this will be my last slide before I turn up. Maybe I get a couple more. I, I, I always have a couple more slides, so bear with me. Um, the biggest thing that we found about people that own our platform is that they have a sustainable, repeatable system of methodology is probably the best way to say it is that where they analyze, they optimize, they plan and they control their spend in their IT budgets in a way which allows them to shake out a lot of the waste, do that cost cutting, but not cut off their nose to spite their face. They free up monies, allow them to modernize and move in the direction that they want to go. Each one of them really owned this process, end-to-end process, to get from A to B. That was the most exciting thing that came out of these focus groups and this analysis that took place. So as we go on, we're going to touch on a few areas today, specifically cloud. And as part of that, application rationalization is core to that. And you can all see this slide, and we all know it. Everything's moving to the cloud. Not everything. I find, and what we found as part of this analysis is that Academic medical centers will always be a hybrid environment due to HIPAA, other data requirements. There'll always be applications that run on-prem or in a designated data center, but also things they can move to commercial cloud. But managing that gets a little trickier. So what we want to show you today is the benefit of some of the capabilities of how you can shake out a lot of that cost, both from a SaaS perspective and also something we call cloudability shift on how you actually migrate workloads to the cloud. So Doug, hopefully you're you're getting teed up here in the background to take control and I might have one more slide about more of what I was just saying is that challenges of cloud financial management and cloud SaaS licenses are very similar to what people have with a lot of their IT spend. Getting that visibility, having an automated process and practice and not be disjointed from the rest of the organization and rest of the business. So why don't I pause there, Doug, and uh, bring you into the conversation and see if you're ready to show some of these things. I can stop presenting and turn it over to you if you're ready for a live demonstration to walk through for folks some of the things that I'm talking about here to help them address this cost cutting issue that's so important to the academic medical community. Absolutely. Thank you, Bob. Yep, definitely ready. As soon as you want to stop sharing. Okay. I think think you've used this application before. (laughs) Microsoft Teams? Yeah, a couple of times. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, My name is Doug Weaver. I'm a solution consultant. I work alongside uh, Bob, uh, Doug Ellis, also on the line, as well as uh, Jay Wanick, a counterpart of mine. Uh, What I'm introducing to you right now is essentially a landing page uh, for CloudAbility Shift, and I've already pre-selected into one of the plans here uh, just to facilitate the conversation, knowing that we do have a little bit of limited time here. And, And The key part for this is, again, like as Bob teed up, is that most of uh, our customers or prospects uh, generally are not on either side of the spectrum. They're somewhere in the middle as far as their cloud uh, maturity or on-prem preferences. So CloudAbility Shift here allows you to take uh, on-prem as well as as three of the major uh, cloud service providers. And as you can see, we're selected on the cost comparison page is take a look at exactly what uh, cost uh, your IT organizations would incur based upon whatever options are available to you. In this plan here, uh, which is a five-year plan, uh, you can outline each individual application, uh, where it aligns to location, 
And then uh, the blue coloring uh, identifies uh, the selected option and in which wave uh, over the five years uh, this um, option will be exercised. Okay, uh, the other thing is depending upon uh, um, what type of conversation you're having and who you're having that conversation with. Carrying on here, one of the things you'll notice, uh, the, the attribute to the perspective uh, of all Aptio solutions is that you can tailor uh, your views and selectability options for those specific conversations, for those specific audience you may have. And you'll always have uh, KPIs readily apparent uh, so you can quickly gauge uh, where you're at in your migration strategy. Moving into how uh, going behind the scenes, uh, where does all this data um, originate from and what sort of uh, level of difficulty it is. In the settings and preferences, we do have out of the box connectors. You also uh, have the option based upon uh, information available, uh, do a manual upload via Excel. Um, and then in the very near future, uh, CloudAbility Shift will be connected to our very robust reporting platform known as TBM Studio, which you'll be able to ingest data to get a very full, uh, robust picture of what your uh, CloudAbility uh, migration strategy looks like. Currently, right now, we're looking at uh, what a, an on-prem infrastructure cost would be, uh, specifically for a site located in Chicago, ability to upload one-time recurring costs, uh, again, just to help build out the robustness of the plan. But more towards today's conversation, uh, Bob had mentioned uh, a few times over, is taking a look at software, a SaaS-based application, migrating um, on-prem applications with perpetual licenses into cloud-based, subscription-based. And then overall, uh, where we'll end up with CloudAbility SaaS is uh, how to better rationalize that overall portfolio. So you always have the option to go in in a wizard-driven fashion to in in ingest your costs or input your costs, which will then uh, roll up and tally up into the larger plan um, uh, for CloudAbility Shift. And what that will look like is after going through and it doing all the proper uh, inputs uh, and data ingestion and allocation is a summary view such as this, which is going to very quickly represent uh, the overall strategy of decreasing on-prem costs and increasing cloud costs over time. Now, this takes into consideration of both on-prem and cloud, uh, the, the top visualization does here, but down below is where you can start breaking it out in between the two. And again, uh, honing in on the three major uh, cloud service providers, having a few different options for whether or not you want which visualization you would like to see or use for those conversations. Um, and then also filtering uh, options and being able to uh, pivot by various different perspectives. Going down, now all of a sudden is we're taking a holistic approach on what our on-prem costs, what exactly comprises it, and any specific or, or lingering uncommitted costs uh, uh, now uh, have been accounted for. So at a high level, Cloudability Shift assists our customers uh, that are in the beginning or in mid-stride of a cloud migration strategy which uh, is uh, communicates directly with another solution that we have, uh, which Bob brought up, which is CloudAbility. So CloudAbility manages and monitors all of your infrastructure, uh, IaaS and PaaS uh, uh, cloud costs. Um, it's uh, obviously a leader uh, in this industry. Um, but what we land on here is your summary dashboard and everything that you see here in similar fashion can be uh, construed uh, for a specific person or persona inside your organization. It allows you to do a table format to get um, to limit your view down to top spend. Uh, you can uh, incorporate uh, KPIs. Uh, but instead of just giving you one uh, gross number as far as what your spend may be for uh, any selectable period of time, uh, what CloudAbility really does is it helps drive and foster that collaboration and informed decision making across your organization. And so, for instance, here is if you focus on the center of this widget, this KPI now provides context because sometimes people have the misnomer or misunderstanding is that by moving to the cloud, my cloud cost or my overall cost will go down. And that's not always the case is sometimes your overall cost could go up, but the context provided here is that this will show you is whether or not your, uh, your organization will become more efficient or effective over time. So gross costs can go up, but this context will lead into a conversation you can have about unit economics. 
and depending upon uh, what you may want to measure is you could then um, calculate out your cloud costs for supporting uh, on an individual basis uh, uh, for patients, uh, for teams, uh, the number of clicks your employees have into specific applications. You can do that because CloudAbility was built with API first, UI second. So you're able to extract information out and put information in to better suit your organizational needs. There's three main um, phases uh, for uh, FinOps, which uh, CloudAbility is aligned to the FinOps methodology, and that is inform, optimize, operate. Dashboards here are a very good tool uh, to help inform you and your organization and your peers. Uh, this is another out of the box uh, report, which we find that is very well received with our customers. And the reason for it is, is because one of the differentiators is you're able to create synthetic tags and specific views for your organization to, again, have very tailored, uh, informed conversation across your organization. What happens when you select the views is that everything in, in the current view and any view you select afterwards would only be pertinent to that specific view or that perspective uh, to dr help drive that conversation. So what you can see is on the left hand side flowing through to the right hand side, this visualization true cost explorer helps you account for every single dollar in your cloud spend. You can leverage any, any filter that is present, whether it's an organic tag or synthetic tag, and then you can add in any additional uh, dimension that you have created in your environment. Uh, so uh, one of the principles here is driving accountability to the edge, uh, disciplined execution throughout the organization. You can build out uh, cloud spend down to the actual individual or at a team level, and then you can include this in the visualization, again, to help drive and account for those costs. As we transition more into the optimized phase of CloudAbility, what this will help you do is uh, CloudAbility will actually re um, make recommendations for RIs, uh, right-sizing recommendations, a holistic view on our commitment manager, and any sort of additional workload placements that you'd like to do for your organization. You can, take, you can see that it is uh, cloud service provider agnostic. It gives you a universal view. It also incorporates more than just EC2, but multiple services for each CSP. The functionality here is oh, to get rid of noise, to, to really quickly hone you in, um, to make you more efficient and effective in optimizing costs for your organization. You can select what time period you would like to look at, what term length, one or three years, savings rate threshold so if you don't want recommendations below a certain threshold just toggle up everything on the page will then update accordingly and then also utilization rate we don't nobody wants to adopt a, a, a recommendation where you're only going to have a utilization rate of 30 percent because then you're going to have a lot of idle wasted uh, resources if you toggle this up to 80 90 percent you can always make sure that every re recommendation that's provided to you is above that threshold and you can see, again, additional recommendations um, down at the bottom. So this is just one way uh, that you can view uh, RI recommendations. The other one is more of um, a holistic view, which is going to offer you uh, one or three year options between no upfront or all upfront costs. And it's going to give you the summary savings percentage on top right hand side of each card. What we generally see is that no one necessarily really falls uh, on the outside or on the outliers of this, but more or less um, inside of the general mi middle here. As you can see, I've just selected a, a, a savings rate, a package of recommendations that should save me about 45% of my spend. Once I select, I simply generate the plan. Everything behind it is actually now aligned to that savings percentage based upon uh, the term length and the payment options uh, selected in that previous view. Another method for optimiz optimizing our cloud costs is right sizing. So again, across CSPs and containers, multiple services, so not just limited to one or two, you're able to take a look at what cost basis you would like, uh, timeline, when, whether or not you want a 10 or 30 day view, and then be able to leverage any filters or any views uh, that fit you and your organization. From here is if you wanted to explore any of these right sizing recommendations, obviously you can always see what your current and new and recommended action would be. Uh, but the details functionality is where this really stands out is because this plan, this recommendation down at the resource level ID you can quickly compare against five other recommendations. The reason that this is being recommended, you can see a savings rate is uh, 55% in comparison to 24 and others. 
But the risk tolerance here, make sure that you're never left out and that the recommendation can actually cover down on the usage um, that your organization needs. A key point in the graphic that's represented in front of you is this, is that other solutions out there will actually average out your utilization uh, for a given time period. Cloudability does not do that. It takes into consideration what your max usage is for um, each time timestamp uh, that's gathered. We get uh, these metrics in several times per hour. So all of that is uh, uh, reflected here. And as you scroll through, you can see what your max is, what your capacity and where the recommendation is um, to make sure that you right size the instances for you and your organization. From here, a recent development, and again, this one resonates very well, is Cloudability, you cannot um, execute uh, 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 optimization recommendation from inside Cloudability, and that is done in purposeful manner. What, what Cloudability is meant to do is to be the catalyst for your organization to then optimize from. Inside here, uh, comments and collaboration, you can actually use this, and it's similar to a, a Twitter functionality, is you can use an at sign and identify any user associated to this and reach out to them publicly or privately, right? And say that you would like to exercise uh, this right sizing recommendation or this savings opportunity based upon X, Y, or Z reasons. When you hit comment, because we do understand that not everybody lives inside uh, after your products on a day-to-day -day basis, this will reach out to their associated email and bring them back into this page to review the recommendation and all its sort of requisite details uh, before saying yes or no. The, the commentary function, again, based upon whether it was private or public, uh, will be uh, retained in the solution here moving forward. So you can always go back for uh, reference um, in the near future. So we've spent some time in Inform. We've now kind of wrapping up uh, that uh, optimization phase from, from FinOps methodology there. And then next is moving into an operator. And so one of the views um, that we commonly get asked for is a budgeting and forecasting view. And what you can see here is KPIs along the top, similar functionality to be able to limit this budget and view down to a specific persona or a group of personas. And then you have the option to extend or contract what the forecasted range is, uh, your model, uh, what sort of costs would you like excluded from this view? Uh, so sometimes users would like to take into consideration or exclude credits, one-time charges. And then you're allowed to build within your organization, uh, you're uh, allowed an unlimited amount of budgets. And what that means is depending upon how your organization operates, you have the flexibility to incorporate a, a holistic budget, which you can then pare down via view or create sub budgets uh, based upon the views uh, and the roles granted um, from the users in your organization. Quickly identify um, the bar chart here is going to show you what your budgeted spend would be. Uh, the line graph um, on the left hand side is going to show you over time, the fluctuations, the ebbs, the peaks, the valleys of your spend, and then what your forecasted spend is moving forward. A detail forecast is below. So again, you can go into each specific line item if you'd like and look up the requisite details as to why this came to be. But then you can also, depending upon whatever cycle you, your organization has, whether it's monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually, uh, and go ahead and create this as a new budget um, that you can then work from. And again, like I said, is that it, you're allowed uh, an uh, uh, unlimited amount of budgets that you can then select from, drop down menu, the visualization here would then update accordingly. So that rounds out how to take a look at uh, any spend associated with a cloud migration strategy, which is inclusive of both on-prem and cloud-based costs. Uh, the last uh, 10 minutes or so we've spent here in the cloudability solution, just focusing on cloud-based costs. The value statement here, or one of the value statements for your organization is the fact that cloudability shift will directly link to cloudability. So on a real time basis, all of your cloud based spend will be incorporated back into that migration strategy. Uh, so at any given point in time, you know exactly where you stand uh, on a real time basis in, in that migration strategy. The, the last piece to talk about from a cloud perspective is uh, SaaS-based uh, applications. And so for that, we have what we refer to as Cloudability SaaS. The landing page, the dashboard that you see in front of me is currently uh, toggled towards an IT uh, uh, view. We also have a procurement type view. 
Uh, and that's to just, again, because the cloudability products and solution set are meant to be holistic. So multiple personas will derive value uh, from the information contained therein. You can identify uh, very quickly what your total estimated uh, annual cost would be broken out monthly, as well as what potential savings you're leaving out there on the table at any given time. This stems from a, a few different computations that run behind the scenes, but essentially it, one of the main levers is the identification of inactive users. These applications um, uh, can be uh, ingested into the cloudability solution from a few different ways. Because again, we want you and your organization to have flexibility and be successful. You, we can connect via SSO. And so any application connected to your SSO will then populate in here. And then we can align uh, license types to the specific users. You can set parameters. Uh, so as if you want users to be considered inactive after 30 days or after 45 days, you can, you can set those parameters. Based upon those parameters, you can also configure your alerts. So if you want to know when you're getting close to exhausting uh, your licenses, which could potentially result in an estimated annual overage of X number of dollars, the system here will reach out to you and proactively let you know you might want to go renegotiate or true up uh, the license uh, licenses that you've purchased. And at any given point in time, you can quickly derive what's the total number of inactors I have, inactive users I have across my application portfolio. And here, there are several out of the box uh, reports with the ability that you can go ahead and build uh, custom reports should you choose to do so. So you can quickly become informed as to what your uh, SaaS application landscape looks like. But SSO is just one option. So to get more granular data, more useful data, we also have about 30 out of the box connectors to a lot of the very large uh, SaaS applications that generally consume a majority of spend for our customers. And then the last option is that you have the ability to actually manually upload uh, any custom applications uh, or applications not found via SSO or direct uh, out of the box connectors. And again, that's simply done by downloading a, a template from the solution here and then just uh, uploading it back in there. And so from here, um, optimization costs, uh, Bob had mentioned and, and teed it up earlier in the conversation about um, rationalizing uh, your application portfolio. And so we can quickly jump into what we refer to as consolidation cards. So on the back end in our repository of data um, behind the scenes here is what Cloudability does for every application that you connect to uh, Cloudability SaaS is it's going to leverage uh, tags, it's going to le leverage classifications, and it's going to categorize those applications. That classification, that categorization feeds into consolidation cards because it's going to proactively uh, recommend where you might have duplication of effort, duplication of spend for various different applications. So what you can see is based upon uh, the category here of meetings, subcategory of company tools, we have multiple different instances of GoTo, multiple different instances of Zoom. When we run the analysis, very quickly is based upon the number of users, licenses purchased, the cost of those licenses and the number of inactive users, it's going to spit out a result or a recommendation for you as to which one to keep and which ones to get rid of. Again, this is something we find that resonates very well because it allows people to very quickly uh, get a, a good indicator of which direction they should head into. Um, from a user's perspective, inside um, uh, an application card, you might identify that a specific user has become inactive. What you can do from this um, uh, perspective is actually go in and look up a specific user and then see their details across your entire organization, right? So is if someone becomes inactive in one application and you want to um, make sure you optimize your license usage, not just its cost, but its usage, this is a very uh, useful view where you can begin to see, is that user actually costing us money that we can then recoup and reallocate out to other users that would actually probably use this. The built-in functionality here is that we have pre-built communication tools so we can actively reach out to this person, send them a request, based upon the information that we know of where they're being inactive and it will reach out and you can uh, free text the message saying please validate whether or not we can deprovision these licenses from you based upon whether or not they respond is the next step would actually be moving into a deprovisioning uh, stance similar to cloudability with recommendations 
this uh, out of the box functionality does not move into the software asset asset management uh, uh, aspect uh, of um, SaaS application management. But what you can do is set up predetermined distribution list is if we go in here and then we select a couple of users and generate a uh, request for deprovisioning, you can include an email alias to a ticketing system to have that uh, become automatically become a ticket uh, for someone to be to be assigned to somebody to then go ahead and deprovision. So out of the box functionality is that necessarily the automation is not there, but the functionality is made possible through other means as well, um, just because of the interactive nature of the solution here. Another another common use case um, is, uh, and you'll see here in the discovered apps tab, is any potential discovery of shadow IT spend um, is if, uh, depending upon the maturity level of your procurement channels and overall organizational culture and accountability, you can uh, get into this tab and based upon connecting to uh, multiple different expense systems such as Concur, NetSuite, or Expensify, what you can do is ingest that expense data um, through machine learning, through the CloudAbility SaaS, the backend operations here. It will actually make recommendations what it might what, and recommend that you take a look and review uh, what might be potential shadow spend, uh, shadow IT spend that does not go through normal procurement and contractual channels. So again, here is if you wanted to work offline, you can go ahead and download the information. You can also manually upload uh, expenses um, uh, via Excel. So again, this is going to help you control and push people to do the right thing through uh, normal and approved procurement channels, which uh, just is going to help everybody control costs at the end of the day. From a contractual perspective, uh, there's a few different ways to get contracts into CloudAbility SaaS here. One is from an individual application perspective, you can go ahead and upload a PDF and over the course of the next 24, 48 hours, uh, CloudAbility SaaS will then parse that information out uh, and it'll be um, represented on an individual basis as well as from an aggregate view. We're currently in the aggregate view and we're looking at any uh, potential upcoming contract renewals. So again, one of the alert functions that you can configure for your organization is that uh, no contract expires without multiple notifications being sent out. And so why I emphasize multiple notifications is that you can set a notification to be sent out 30 days, 60 days, 90 days ahead of when that contract expiration. So in conjunction with uh, potential overconsumption of the licenses purchased, you'll also get an alert as to when a, a, a specific end date is approaching. You have the option from this view, you can go ahead and uh, kick off a contract renewal. So based upon the information that you've uh, aligned to any given application, uh, a pre-built distribution list or workflow will be kicked off. And then each person uh, through that workflow has the option to provide um, feedback or commentary and, as to, and a thumbs up as to whether or not they approve or disapprove. If we toggle the view out of just the upcoming and we take a look at all renewals, this uh, view uh, helps and it resonates with customers because not only does it give you what your projected estimated spend is, but also what your estimated savings would be on a quarterly basis. This allows people to proactively get into a good stance uh, to go back into contract renewal, will help uncover uh, informational aspects that might help with negotiating a better rate or a proper license count for purchasing. Um, because one of the feedback uh, that we hear uh, intermittently is that organizations may be able to negotiate a great rate, but the problem is, is that they had to purchase uh, a, an astronomical amount of licenses in order to get that rate. From this view, you can quickly see what your annual cost and annual savings would be. And then when you click into it and go into each individual app card, you can actually see what the total number of licenses purchased, as well as the number of licenses provisioned. It's going to help with adoption metrics and whether or not you're actually uh, making good use of the money that you spend. So uh, from here, um, again, you can click in, uh, get all that pertinent information um, from an individual app perspective. Uh, it has a similar view, so you can go in and also see any sort of renewal activities associated with it. Um, trying to think is that we kind of covered down on a lot of the CloudAbility SaaS. The last couple of things I would like to touch on, uh, again, differentiator here uh, for CloudAbility SaaS is the ability to do some what if planning. So as we go through, uh, you build your budgets, you get your budgets approved, and we plan for our workforce expanding or contracting, 
the what if scenario planning would definitely help with uh, alignment to applications to various different business units or organizations. Uh, so if you take a look at it, as if you were looking to hire uh, 10 employees in, in the sales department uh, or any organization uh, or team that would fit your organization, you can quickly see what, what licenses and what type of license would be necessary, the amount that they currently purchased and number of in use, and then adding in additional number of users. So if you can see that you already have 12 licenses and only eight are be currently being used, instead of buying a full 10, you might want to decrease that and only buy six more. You can see that the annual cost, projected cost on the right-hand side automatically updates. Uh, another use case is uh, the difference between hiring different types of employees. Uh, you know, some employees might not need necessarily this higher priced version of a license. You could start with a lower uh, price. So as if you wanted to split the cost that way, you can do that as well. So it helps give you a more fuller, uh, robust um, uh, cost for onboarding uh, your various different um, employees and the aggregate cost for doing those sorts of actions as well. So something else you can take into consideration while driving informed uh, decisions across your organization. The last thing I want to touch on is what we refer to as self-service reporting. And so we've covered down on the cloudability shift. We've covered down on cloudability and cloudability SaaS. Self-service reporting is a holistic umbrella, a reporting layer that takes a look at all Aptio products. And so depending upon who you're having a conversation with or trying to uh, drive towards a decision on, this gives you a, a universal view against any of the data components contained in any of the Aptio solutions. So what you can see is on the top left hand side, all of this information, uh, license users, et cetera, derives from the CloudAbility SaaS solution and on the right hand side all the data, data points derived from the uh, uh, cloud ability uh, solution taking a look at your IaaS and pass spend uh, for cloud based um, this also will link to tbm studio which is another uh, aptio solution so if you have any specific use case outlier that it did not cover or is not covered in any of our uh, educational materials on our solutions TBM Studio can uh, essentially connect to virtually any data source um, that you would like to at any iterative basis, and also has the ability to just upload and digest uh, Excel files as well. And you can include and devise uh, additional business metrics for you and your organization. But with that, it looks like we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, does anybody here uh, have any questions? Or Bob, I can stop sharing and turn it back over to you. Yeah, that would be great, Doug. That was awesome. Um, I don't know if there's any questions, but we can pivot to some of the wrap up slides and, and go from there. So let me I have to share content like you were doing. So Doug, that was a that was a great walkthrough. I, I think the the notion of um, cloudability and that whole space where you you truly have a and I believe it's called the FinOps model that you refer to the notion of inform, optimize and operate uh, gives you a methodology to look at everything cloud. And I find that I found that to be sort of the most intriguing where a lot of folks just sort of advance to the cloud and they don't um, have sort of a strategy behind it other than the fact that we're going to move to the cloud. So that was great and I appreciate you taking us through cloudability, cloudability shift and also CloudAbility SaaS is a, a way to track and measure and manage um, the cloud spend. So let me, I don't know if you can see the class slides now. Yep. Okay, terrific. So I just have for a few more minutes here, um, I'll put my camera back on too if that makes a difference. But uh, so Doug took you through the CloudAbility family and why do we go there? Uh, it was very important to talk about that cost cutting side of the equation, the cost transformation, the cost movement to look at your expend and give you some more tactical ways of shaking out some costs that it might be going on today and give you the tools and technology and the automation behind it to allow you to move some of those dollars. So talked about shift, talked about the cloudability family in the sense of giving you the ability to inform, optimize, and operate your cloud spend. And really looking at SaaS as a, a way of driving portfolio optimization as well and understanding your licensing and your vendor costs there. 
and looking at SaaS as a whole and streamlining that portfolio. So last two slides here is really when we look at academic medical centers in this whole world is that, you know, we're trying to help organizations. And I talked about the ROI that a lot of organizations are achieving today, but moving to automation gives you that single source of truth, uh, gives you the ability to not make decisions based on anecdotal information, rather hard facts, give you a way to plan, spend and deploy IT assets in an automated way where you can shake out a lot of the variance and free up those monies around cloud, looking at the cloud SaaS licensing, shifting to the cloud, managing cloud spend, and then ultimately the prioritizing and portfolio management overall as part of the capability that we talked about and our owners uh, take advantage of Aptio for today. So in the end, we have about 1800 customers. It's really a data-driven decision-making platform focused on IT financial management and giving you that accurate picture of your portfolio today and where you want to go moving forward. So I want to thank everyone for their time today. Thank you, Doug, for the walkthrough. Uh, this session has been recorded. It'll be made available to those that attended, also to others that may want to see a copy of the content. We'll make that available as well. Thank you, everyone, and I appreciate your time.